All right, guys, welcome, welcome back to Middleman Mastery Podcast. Today I have Alex, who is, uh, you know, who is known on YouTube as one of the best digital marketing gurus for car dealerships. He's been, um, he has plenty of content on how you can start your own social media marketing, marketing agency, specifically targeting car dealerships. Um, that's actually how I found him and that's how I came in contact with this uh, awesome gentleman. Uh, pretty much I was looking at getting started with my, with my social media and I, I wanted to do something dealing with high ticket, uh, something that could pay me you know, anywhere from two grand and above on my clients. And uh, just doing my research, I stumbled across some of his videos and uh, as his videos kept showing, and I kept watching and watching. I was like, dude, I have to get in contact with this guy and learn a thing or two from him because he definitely is a box of knowledge. So I gave him a call. Um, and fast forward, we became good friends. And uh, pretty much I have him on here to, so that he could not only teach you and show you how you could start your own business using social media, but also how he himself is being a mastery of the middleman concept. And, and taking his business, his game to the next level. So without further ado, Alex, how are you doing today, man? Doing great, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. Um, thanks for, hey, thanks for coming on, man. Thanks for coming on. You know, I know you're a busy man. I know you have a lot of students now. A lot of people are buying the courses and stuff like that. Uh, so if a, lot of, if a lot of people have never heard of you, um, can you just tell them a little bit about like what you do, what you're an expert at, and uh, pretty much how you are helping people and, you know, in today's uh, world and today's society and things like that. Absolutely, yeah. So uh, pretty much what I do, uh, we, I have an agency, it's called Auto Dealer Boost, and we help uh, dealerships uh, you know, grow their business by utilizing, like as you mentioned, like being a middleman, but utilizing social media marketing platforms like Facebook and YouTube and Instagram to bring them more leads and primarily uh, help them sell more cars. So this is my main business. And also I have a coaching program where uh, I leverage, uh, I create a coaching program where I have students and we help them uh, pretty much start agency and uh, agency in specific niche, which is automotive. And we help them starting from the scratch, this agency and help dealerships do the same that we do in my agency, help uh, sell more cars, bring them leads and, you know, scale the agency. So this two business, two businesses, like one is, actual agency and second is info business and that's that's how how we rolling <laughs> awesome stuff yeah. man awesome stuff it sounds like you guys are moving so so how did you even get started into this man like what what was alex you know pre pre social media pre everything like what was what was what was alex like that's a great question man so which is crazy part before that i before I get into like social media marketing and all this like agency stuff, business and all that, I was, it was just a crazy story because uh, when I got here to uh, move to United States, it, it was around three years ago, three and a half. Like I barely spoke English. Like it was, I got here, I had $300 in my pocket and I got a job as a server, right? In Golden Corral. It's like, uh, it was like a buffet here in, in South. And it was my job. Yeah, we were living in one house, 15 people. It was, it was insane. So I was just, I got it here. I was just trying to survive, you know, got second job uh, in, uh, I was working at also like Italian restaurant. Was like, I, I was also like a server. And then I got a third job. I was like a, kind of, uh, kind of a personal trainer at the gym, but not really. <laughs> All they were allowing me like to, you know, um, just cleaning toilets and just uh, vacuum cleaning the gym sometimes. So it's more, but sometimes they were giving me like uh, some uh, chances to train people because I had, I had kind of the uh, certification for my country, but here to use it here, I needed to, you know, do American certification, all that stuff. But sometimes they're like, you know what, you can maybe take this, but primarily I was this more, were my three jobs. And then what happened is, uh, honestly, I just, uh, I was, it was one day I was on YouTube and I saw an ad. <laughs> I saw Ty Lopez ad, <laughs> uh, which is crazy. Here's my Lambo. Here's my backyard. <laughs> yeah. I think, yeah, it was something, I don't think it was that one, but yeah, 
of something in that uh, of one of those his ads. So I, I saw the ad and I'm like, you know what? It sounds interesting. So I checked it out. I watched his like training webinar and I'm like, you know what? I have I have nothing to lose. But by that time, actually, I got I moved to Austin here, Texas, and I got into I got into sales. So we were doing door to door sales. And uh, it was business to business. It was absolutely, man, it was hell. Because I, at the time, in my car, I didn't have AC. So it was so hot. It was summer job I got there uh, in June. Wow. Um, and it was so freaking hot here. It was like 105 degrees. And I'm driving my car. And it's and like... This is the, the temperature in Austin, right? In yeah, Austin. it's in Austin. 105 degrees during the summer, June, July, and mm-hmm. August. And it was absolute hell. And we had to, you know, wear in suits. So imagine that you like with no AC, all sweating, walking out of the car and you go into push to business. And we were selling T-Mobile services, right? Uh, for businesses. And then you pitch in this T-Mobile stuff and they're like, you know what? Get out here. <laughs> like, we don't, we don't want to hear that. Yeah. So yeah. it was, it was really tough like that. But on the other side, I learned a lot of about, um, about sales, right? That, that was that kind of like a tip I can give right off the bat. If you guys trying to, to get into any type of business, you, you need to learn how to sell. Like if you don't know how to sell, it, it's going to be hard for you. So, but anyways, uh, I, I learned, uh, I was doing that. And then I saw that YouTube ad and I'm like, you know what? I have nothing to lose. So I just jumped on the board. I got a course. I pay it was 997 right away or it was like three payments or 497 or something like you know what i'll just go all in and uh, yeah and that's how i get in uh it was a great course it was a great program but the thing is it wasn't as detailed a lot of pieces were missing out so i had to do a lot of my own research trying to figure out a lot of stuff on my uh, on my own and but that's how i get into it was like a, it was a great course as a, as a base you know to start out since like if i never done any you know social media by the way before i get in i, I didn't have any social media presence i didn't have instagram i didn't have facebook uh really so nobody even knew you about you yeah and the thing is like i even wasn't using myself social media so it was for me like oh there's facebook ads you know like all I had, all I was using is like YouTube watching different videos, but like I never, you know, wasn't like tech savvy, you know, using this social media stuff. So that was a great base, as I'm saying, learning all this stuff through, uh, through the course. And then I just started to, you know, to dive deep into that and uh, learning about more. Um, and that's how pretty much how I get started. Okay. Okay. I mean, and you know, that's, it's funny because me and you have similar type of stories, right? Like I used to sell windows and roofing, um, before I even got started into, into, um, the digital world, right? I was going door to door myself selling and it got to a point I'm like, yo, I can't keep doing this. I can't yeah. keep doing it. And then I came across a, uh, a 16 year old kid that was making uh, $28,000 using Shopify. So that's even how I got introduced to this world. And I was like, this kid is 16 years old. I'm like 10 years older than him. And what the heck? So I forced myself to learn. So man, we got the same type of background and, uh, and how we got started. Now, let me, let, let, let's take this back a little bit because I want people to know, because right now, you know, you are at this, at this point in your life where people are looking up to you. They, they love your information. Your, your information is helping them see results. So you become almost like guru is right. Like people come to you for answers for social media and stuff like that. But let's, let, let's go back to the, the beginning, Alex. When Alex first came across the course, um, what were some of his thoughts? Like, because a lot of people think that, you know, uh, when, when we're buying courses to learn, you know, it's, it's just something that you wake up and, and do as an entrepreneur, but we all struggle with making decisions sometimes. Right. I'm pretty sure you felt some type of way. So like what was going through your head the first time you saw that ad and when you, when you were buying that cause to shape your future, like, can you, can you kind of tell us a little bit about the conversation that you were having in your head, um, going in that, in that area? So that's, that's actually, I love this question. You're probably the first person who, who asked this type of question. 
And I think it's important. So, uh, so what happened is the, a lot of, uh, back, okay, let me, let me rephrase it. So a lot of stuff, when people make a decisions, it comes down to the, to two things, life values and the belief system. So what happened is, um, the actual, this part of the reason why I was able to, you know, to kind of go through this like, um, tough times in my life and challenges because I always had one belief in my head that whenever I do, uh, I had like, okay, if it's hard, if, if I go through this, I'm going to become better. Right. I, I was looking for some type of, you know, growing experience in every challenge. So the same was kind of going through my head when I, I got, I got it. I saw that ad and then before making a decision to purchase it, I was like, well, I don't, I don't know if it's legit, right? Even though there was a bunch of testimonials, I, I did some research, but like, I know if it's going to work out, but then I like, you know what? I have nothing to lose. Like the worst case, the worst case, what will happen? I would just, you know, uh, spend thousand dollars. I'm going to be out of this money, which is money comes and go. And if, and then if I won't try, I would regret, right? I wouldn't know if it's, if it's really working, if it's worth it or not. So that was kind of was go- what was going through my head. And I like, you know what? I'll just give it a try. And then if it's not working, that's fine. I'll just be out of $1,000 and then I go ahead, get another job. I know uh, as a servant, make that back, right? It's plus here in the United States, like, man, you can get, you can make, I don't know, extra $1,000, $2,000 on, on the side, just get a job. Like, in my country, to make $1,000, you need to work six months on like three jobs to make $1,000. Wow. wow. And and for, so for those that don't know, can you talk yeah. about where your country so, is? So? Yeah, yeah. I'm originally from Ukraine and, and, and then I moved to Poland. I used to live in Poland and a few other countries in Europe. But here it's so like, well, it's, it's easy. If you know, if you have some basic, uh, fin- you know, basis of uh, financial, financial management and you save at least you know, 10 to 15%, whatever you make, you can easily, you know, try play around, start different businesses because a lot of businesses that you see online, you don't need 20 grand to start it. You just, you just can't start business with a, you know, $500 to a thousand, which is, will take you one month or two months of work, right? If you're saving and you can get another job plus to get a job here, like you, you go apply and they will, you can work as a server. You can get any type of job, right? So it's so, so I was like, I have nothing to lose. I can, if I, you know, waste this money and it's not working, I'll make it back, right? Month, two months, that's fine. So that's what's kind of what's going through my head. And I'm like, you know what? But I knew if I won't, you know, if I won't take that shot, if I won't, I'll just miss that opportunity. And I would never know where it's gonna, it would take me and how it could turn my life like three, 360 degrees around, like, it's absolutely changed my life. Like, seriously, uh, I'm not kidding. Like I was, I had that, you know, mediocre mentality and mindset that, and, and, the, and at the time that like I was average, right? You just go, I had, I was trying different jobs, just so, like probably a lot of people who are watching this or listening to this that, you know, you're trying nine to five jobs or in, in trying to find your, you know, your passion, your, your kind of destiny, your purpose. And that was me. And I was trying again. I was trying to do different jobs. I knew that, you know, in future, I want to start business, have more freedom, uh, travel the world and uh, overall, you know, have more control over my life. So I knew I need to, um, to, to start in future some type of business, but I never knew how. And it was really hard. So, and I was like, you know what? It's, a, it's just a, a, an opportunity to, you know, I, give it a shot and see. So I did. And I saw that, man, it just absolutely changed everything. Yeah, man. You know, and, you know, again, thank you for even sharing that. A lot of people, you know, think it's very easy to make decisions. And I mean, we haven't even gotten to the hard part yet. Right. And which, which of course I, I want, I want our, our listeners and viewers to kind of, kind of grab the concept of an entrepreneur and why it's so important for you to learn how to leverage the systems. Right. So, let, let's go back again. You know, you've, you bought the course now. You, you, you watched all the videos because I'm pretty sure you were like, okay, I'm going to buy it and I'm going to use, I'm going to get my money's worth. You've watched the videos. Where's Alex now? 
so um so what happened is so i watched all of the videos right and i started executing on it i started going after every single business trying to get a bunch of clients and fast forwarding now uh till it's been let me see it's been two and a half years wow yeah, almost, yeah two and a half years since then so right now i have uh i have my agency where we're working with over 28 uh, dealerships nationwide and in, wow. we have a few Canada. And I have uh, a course where we have over, at the time, over 100 students in my program where we're teaching people how to uh, start the similar business like we do. And yeah, that's, that's where we're at right now. That's amazing. All right, so, so pretty much, you know, that, that one decision completely changed your life. It completely yeah. changed your life. It, it, it gave you a whole new perspective of what you can be. And I'm pretty sure right now you feel, you even feel like you're still not at your potential yet, right? Uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that you feel like you get into the next level. That's amazing, man. So th this is one of the things that uh, I always want to let people know. How, how were you feeling when you first started, um, you know, getting into the, tick, the, 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 the thick of, of things with the work? How, how was it when you were, you know, putting out that grind and the fear of it? Like, what, what do you think about fear? And as an entrepreneur, how should somebody think about fear? Um, especially when you're, when you're trying to get to that next level. So that's, that's a good question. About fear, a lot of people, uh, so do I, when, uh, even before making any type of decision, we have this fear, right? It all comes from uh, the sense of security, right? Like if before making a decision, we know that uh, if we're going to lose the money or whatever it is, depending on the decision you're making, the fear, it's something uh, that I learned how to kind of overcome the fear by, by taking an actual action. Like you have, you, you standing, like you standing, okay, let me give you a, a perspective, an example when I was doing skydiving for the first time, right? Oh, okay. And so I was like, it was first time and I was scared as, as hell. Like I was even scared of, of heights and everything. So, and, uh, and then they took us all the way, you know, it was 15,000 feet. Wow. And I remember um, it was tandem, so it was with a person, but still. So I remember we were staying on the edge of, of the plane and dude, I like, I was stepping, like I was standing to actually, to come to the edge. I was like, like step by step, my legs were like, uh, like shaky. I was so scared. And then I realized like, it's just one step further and it's going to absolutely change your, uh, change where you currently at. Could, if you, you know, going to pass through the fear, through that line, it will take you to the, other side of like how how will smith uh, says uh, to the other side of terror oh, so please. yeah yeah you 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 want you go from being terrified to blissful, blissful yeah absolutely so then once you making this first step right in your case could be anything your decision right you make this first step and you feel absolute relief you feel like that you you just you you feel free right and uh and then the only thing i like i think the best way to overcome fear or you know to uh, make better decisions is just to by taking action and practicing like if you just take action not like turn off your uh, you know all your thoughts and just go for it and, and it, it's just gonna happen okay okay thank you for that man so uh you know, so now, you know, Alex is going, he's, he's starting to talk to dealerships, uh, using some of his sales skills that he learned from when he was door to door sweating uh, to start getting clients. At what point did you say, okay, you know what, what I'm doing, it's changing a lot of lives and let me share that information. At what point was that? So what and happened? Also, uh, and also uh, when you started doing it, what were some of the mistakes that happened along the way? Because I'm sure we're always going to make mistakes, but what are some of the mistakes that you could share with people to, to avoid when they start jumping into, you know, that stage of, okay, now it's time for me to build my business. I've taken the step to start a business. Now it's time for me to build it. So 
it was it was an interesting point in my life so uh what i started i started uh, going after those businesses started getting some experience getting better every single day and then since uh i, I had a, a youtube channel and i was documenting it so i i started getting a lot of like uh, positive feedback and people reaching out to me saying like man thank you so much it's absolutely that that video changed my life i was able to close my client or some people like hey i was able to do this for my client and th that feeling that feeling was keep pushing me keep motivating me this positive feedback and that's what uh, i came to the conclusion like you know what i just want to help people and just help because I was in their shoes, right? When I was starting out, when I was seeking for information and, uh, you know, trying to, to learn all this stuff. So I like, you know what? I'll just put together everything I know in one package, right? Into my program and just share this with people so they can learn and, uh, and don't make the same mistakes as I did. Because I made a lot of mistakes, especially when we, it's come, it comes down to social media marketing agency where like if you do not focus in on one niche, right? It's, it's gonna be absolute hell for it. It's, it's gonna be hard because uh, if you're gonna become expert in one single niche, it's, you will you know, grow and scale your agency much faster and you'll get to the point where you want to be if you will just focus on one thing and become you know, expert in it. So that was one of the biggest mistakes that I made when I started this, you know, online business, social media, because I was, man, I was going for every single industry. Like I work with pretty much everyone. I work with uh, chiropractors, uh, restaurants, actual restaurants were one of my first clients, restaurants, chiropractors, uh, gyms, med spas, uh, cryotherapy places, uh, floating uh, uh, spaces. Then uh, you name it. I, I was there, right? Gym, anything. And then after I decided like, Hey, I need to focus on actual, that was kind of the second thing about mistakes, right? That you need to go after high ticket clients, right? Because if you work with restaurant, like you bring them hundred customers and one customer is like $10, mm -hmm. like they don't see the value in it. Like there, there is a value, even if you explain the value ladder that, and lifetime value of a customer that over the course of years, of thousands of dollars, but the restaurant business, owners mentality they it, it, it's just poor mentality they they have self-employed like a uh, workers mentality so it's really hard to work with those people which is uh which is on the other side uh when i start working with the car dealership owners in automotive industry you're actually dealing with a business people like business mindset people who actually know what they're doing know how to grow yeah. their business and and they have high tickets so if you help them sell one car two cars it's over five thousand dollars you bring them in the revenue so that was kind of the realization and the mistake i made going after i wasn't even going here after a uh, food trucks seriously hey <laughs> man you was you was grinding man you was hustling man i was uh, i was going after these food trucks and what i was offering as a service i was selling them a uh, websites like building like landing page because they don't have any like website presence so like, you know what? I saw the opportunity. So I was even going after this food trucks, was selling them $200 package a month to wow. build a landing page through ClickFunnels. And I was selling that. I got food, five food trucks. Uh, and it, by the way, I still have one, <laughs> which is funny. You still, you still got one on the team. I still have one left. Okay. okay. Hey, man. That means that they believe in you, man. You're making some yeah. money to them, right? Yeah. Wow. That's so, amazing, man. But so I was trying everything. And honestly, again, if you focus in one single niche, could be anything, it doesn't have to be dealership, right? Just should be like high ticket niche. So go after niches that are, you know, have high return investment on, on a client that you're going to bring to them. And then you will be able to, you know, scale faster and they will see the value. And the other thing, the customer loyalty and retention with this type of uh, businesses will be higher because they're going to stay with you longer because you keep bringing value every single month. So that's kind of the mistakes I made. And I would recommend to anyone avoiding, you know, going after like restaurants and like a low ticket niches. All right, man. So, so, you know, thank you so much for that, man. A lot of people, you know, when they first started, cause I mean, 
we we talk a lot, right? Me and you, we have conversations because I also own a lot of uh, dealerships and I come to you for advice and what you've been doing and how you're sharing it. And you're definitely right. The reason why I jumped into high ticket was because, you know, I didn't want to, I didn't want to use my talents and, and get paid nothing. Uh, first of all, but the only, the, the second thing to that, that, that kind of falls in, in line and you already said it is sales. In order for you to go for a high ticket, you have to get good at sales. And what I always like to tell people is sales is just a conversation, right? It's a conversation with, uh, with, with, uh, with, uh, with the result that people could get, right? So I guess when it comes to you, right this very moment, this, that's, this, this channel, of course, is for how to master the system and leverage. You want to be a middleman. I always, I always say Uber is a middleman. They're, they're, they're one of the biggest middlemen on, on the face of the earth, right? Airbnb is a middleman. Uber don't own any cabs, but they're a cab company. Airbnb is the biggest hotel. Is literally the biggest hotel company on the planet, and they don't even own one hotel, right? Because they're leveraging systems, they're leveraging people uh, and, and places to bring business. Same thing with, uh, you know, Facebook and YouTube and stuff like that. So I guess we're going to kind of switch gears a little bit. Uh, as it stands right now, you're, you're, you're doing your social media marketing business. What are some of the systems that you started leveraging or? What are some of the systems that you had to understand to be able to leverage to be a professional middleman in your niche right now? So when it comes down to systems, systems are the most important uh, piece was in, in your business. Because if, if you don't have any system, uh, when it comes down, we have systems in my business for everything, for sales, for, uh, for starting from client onboarding to sales process, uh, to uh, to follow up process with those uh, with the prospects and actual clients, uh, also the systems for for delivering results, obviously, and also follow up and client retention, right? So we can keep on average our clients. What I see, uh, they're staying with with us anywhere from eight months to twelve months. So this is an average, and I have one client that with us over already two years. Two years the okay. dealership. Yeah, the dealership, it's a dealership that over two years, and again, it's, it's all with the systems that we have in place. And some of the, the, main, the main thing, if you guys, again, if, if you're trying to leverage uh, other platforms and being a middleman, right, uh, could be in any industry, any niche, you must have system that will allow you to, uh, to, to, to basically simplify your business and make it scalable on the long term. Yeah. And, and again, like we use every single piece of our business from system, from also our support team, from uh, onboarding clients, from sales, everything that, that's all systemized. It's all systemized. Awesome stuff, man. So uh, it, it, do you mind sharing, um, you know, some of the systems that you use? Like, and, and, and you know, as you said, everything that you do is systemized. So. Like uh, if somebody wanted to, let's say, uh, start your own digital marketing, a high ticket dealership agency, uh, what are some of the things that you, you, you would recommend? What are some of the systems and platforms that you recommend that they start looking into, um, you know, before they get your course or, or uh, you know, stuff like that? What are some of the things that you want them to start getting comfortable with before they even start, you know, right. thinking about this thing? That's a, that's a good question. So. The first thing uh, for anyone, again, in any industry, not in social media marketing or even with my course or any other course, the number one thing I recommend to start looking into for everyone is mindset. Like literally guys, 95% like people that I, I can give you like the best, uh, I provided my course, like all the funnels, all the scripts you need to use for sales, all the processes and uh, softwares we use starting from you know, LinkedIn outreach, in-person, call account scripts, everything. I can give you, uh, we also provide the funnels, templates, ads, copies, like you just copy and paste, it's all systemized. But again, if you, like if your mindset is not there, if uh, and you just you just won't succeed. This, this is the reality. So the number one thing, and this is the number one, you know, piece of, uh, uh, the main piece of the course that, working on your mindset, improving and 
becoming better. So if you like, if you would have mindset in place, like you can just have, you just, you would even figure it out without the course, honestly. And when you say my mindset, what are, what are some of the things that people should be thinking about? Like, uh, mm-hmm. or how, like, if you say mindset, what do you, what do you exactly mean by that? So by mindset, I mean, starting from everything from life values, right? What are, what are the most like, okay, let me give you a, an example, do a quick exercise right now, as you guys listening to this and watching, take a piece of paper and write down, uh, write down 10 uh, life values that you have right now currently and uh, write, uh, write them down in the order from one to 10 of importance, right? Number one, the most important value, right? And, but make sure there's two different types of values. There's means and ends. So ends type of values that we have, for example, if I would ask you, okay, let's do it. Uh, if I'll ask you, uh, man, what is, uh, what is the most, what is, what do you value the most in life? What, what I value the most in life myself is to, to be the, the most successful person in my lineage, my family so, lineage. So you would say success, right? Family, money, freedom, um, uh, love, happiness, right? So when we do this exercise, if, if uh, for example, the ends, a lot of people, a lot of people don't know exactly the difference between the ends and means values, meaning that ends values, that's the actual emotional state that we all looking for pleasure or, or avoid pain. So the ends values is, you would say, love, happiness, um, you know, freedom and stuff like that. But a lot of people, um, a lot of people thinking about that, like, oh, family, but family is not, it gives you the end result, which is love, sense of security, connection. So uh, back, going back to our exercise. So as you guys gonna write down right now, these 10 values, this, is, this can absolutely change your life if you would switch the order of your values. For example, when I first did this exercise and I put on my list was the first, number one was success. The second was freedom. And the last one was health. So, and back then I was uh, overweight. So I like, I need to start changing something in my life if I, if I, and I was, you know, I didn't have energy, I couldn't work. So you want to optimize your list of values and it will automatically help you virtually change any area of your life by optimizing this list and uh, putting the list in order towards your goal that will help you achieve your goal. So if you look at your list and you will see like, for example, for a person that has the number one on the list security, right? And, and the, it's called moving towards values and the other uh, values that's moving away from values. And on that list, let's say the number one thing they will have rejection, like the, the type of that they are scared about. So if they compare those lists and do you see this person become an entrepreneur with those type of values? Like if the number one thing for them, security, comfort, I don't know, family, etc. cetera, um, love, I don't know. And then on the other list, it's like they, the moving away values are, again, like rejection and humiliation and stuff like that. So with this type of values, they, it's going to be really hard and tough for them to get any success. Mm-hmm. So they need to first work and see how they need to optimize the list of those values. So that ultimately will help them make better decisions and overall, uh, and overall not being, you know, uh, being afraid of rejection or fear, anything. So if you set up the values, the next step you need to do is set up your belief system and optimize again. You can do the same exercise about your beliefs and write down, uh, write down the beliefs that you have right now, right? If you believe there are, uh, you know, positive and negative beliefs, if you believe uh, overall, just set up the list of beliefs like uh, your global beliefs, for example, about people, money, abundance, success, uh, write them down and beliefs like if and then, right? For example, if I'm going to do cold calling, I'm going to get, uh, I'm not going to land the meeting, right? Or uh, so this is a belief, right? 
the people scared to start cold calling. <laughs> this this just all comes down to belief. Or right, absolutely. If, yeah. Or like if they think, oh, um, if I'm starting an agency, I, I need some new savvy strategy on onboarding clients. Something like crazy as shit, like super funnel with <laughs> with a bunch of softwares new that no no one even heard. So they think, okay, I need I need that. So that's that's they believe. They think, okay, if I don't have that, I can't start an agency or I can't I can't do any business without some super fancy technique or strategy. And the same like if we think about health, right? Do you is it is it really hard? Is it really hard right now and in, uh, in currently? Is it really hard to be fit and healthy? No, like really, it's it's not really hard. Like, even though you need to avoid information to, to become fit and healthy. And mm -hmm. the system is, system is super easy to, to be fit and healthy. Just eat good food, don't eat junk food, and exercise every single day or at least three times a week. That's it. But people are looking for something like a magic pill. They're like, oh, this new protein diet, I know. If you're going to do that, you're going to be healthy. And because people like to believe and believe that something that is going to be easy for them because that's how our mind works what is easy boom it, it, it's go it go for it but there is other path that a lot of people don't take that's why it's only one percent out of uh, out of you know hundred people who start in business or, or people who are successful in life that they take in a route of of the heart of the the route of uh, where it's not easy it's hard to to get there so uh so that's why like in health it's everything's easy and systemized it's just do two things you're gonna be good so again like coming back i start i start talking a lot about all this but like coming back to the things what that to the question yeah, that's yeah, yeah coming back to that uh you need to optimize your life and um and set up core beliefs that will help you achieve your ultimate goal could be anything doesn't have to be business could be relationships uh could be fi finance right physical mentally whatever it is for you you need to optimize your life values beliefs and and then you will get to to the point to, to your goal or what whatever it is for you okay okay man thank you man thank you for uh for diving into it and let people see what what mindset is all about right um, you know, because at the end of the day, in order for you to win, I was reading this article. Now, I don't, I, I forgot where I read it at, and I don't know how accurate they are, but they're saying that uh, your thoughts evoke feelings and feelings evoke your health. So the more negative your thoughts are, the more sick you get, literally, your body. And the more positive you think, the better you feel. So, you know, I 100% agree with you on mindset. I feel as though that people... Um, need to need to always have the mindset to win and be be thinking as winners. Um, and if your mind is not shaped up to be a winner, then you have to kind of uh, you know you have to to shape your mind into into that. So uh, you went into you know some activities that people could do to try to shape that and and see what their core beliefs are, what they really think their purpose is. Um, and I think that's amazing because that that could definitely help people. Um, you know, look into it and see where they want to uh, really start their journey, really start their journey. Now, um, life is good. Um, now, life is getting better, but I'm pretty sure you still have problems, right? And uh, what are problems to you? Because I'm under the impression that problems are blessings. And they're blessings because the minute you figure out that problem, literally, once you overcome that problem, whatever that problem is, becomes the catalyst, becomes the the engine, the boost to get you to the next level. So I always think that whenever you have more, the more problems you have, the more blessings you have. You just have to be able to overcome it. But you know, that's how, that's how I interpret it. How do you interpret problems, issues, things like that? That's a great question. That's actually, again, comes down to mindset, right? That's another piece of right, right. how people think, how people see the problems, obstacles, challenges in their life. Because I love how you said that you see every single problem is like a blessing and new opportunity for you to overcome and become better. And the exact same, I have the exact same 
mindset about this. Like every single problem, I don't see, actually, I don't see, I don't, it depends also another thing, how people uh, word certain you know, like things. Like instead of uh, I see problems and I, I, I name them opportunities. Like I don't tell like, oh, I have this problem, right? In my business. So, like I have an opportunity to, let's say, made my business make my business better or uh i i don't know if something is not working or uh, you know because you need to understand that nothing will ever go with your plan right you'll always have some route like that some ups and downs so how i see this it's always an opportunity to become better to make make something better and uh overall improve yourself as a person because this challenge, after you overcome the challenge, you will never be the same person as in before the challenge. Okay. That, that's how I see that, yeah. Absolutely, so it, the challenge kind of molds you and grows you into a much better person, right? Yep. Okay, all right, man, so we're gonna switch a little bit of uh, a, a little gears here. We've talked about a little bit about mindset. So now let's uh, kind of jump into how some people can, can start your own digital marketing agency right um and how they could be a middleman of that platform so let's say uh somebody has has started uh becoming a digital marketer um and they 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 go well first of all i always ask all my guests this how important how important do you think appearances are especially when you're sitting down with a business owner uh you said appearances yeah appearance like how you look oh, okay got it uh, sorry so, um, honestly, I believe in appearance, uh, special when you on the meeting with a business owner, but I'm kind of a guy that I believe you need to appear to that person, um, on the same level as they are, meaning that you, you don't want to also overdraft if we, okay, if, are we talking right now about like more attire and or just appear yeah, as yeah, attire so I, i've never met you you're 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 okay got it. business yeah okay so i would say yeah i believe I, I believe in dressing up again like suits and everything but i'm more uh i'm more on the side of you need to match the appearance of the person so for example if you um if you if you go to a i don't know factory a factory where just all workers okay it's a bad example <laughs> it's a bad it's a bad example but basically you need to you need to match the appearance of the business owner you're in like like if you uh, if if you would go okay let me give an example with a dealership if it's a, like a really small dealership that they sell you know just, there's just one man show one guy that sells cars so if you would come in a suit and everything you 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 notice that these people they just, you know, wear whatever, like t jeans, t-shirt, just normally, especially here in Texas. <laughs> but uh, if you would come in and, uh, in, you know, all dress up and, and suit, like they already know, like, hey, you're here there to sell, not to serve. So I usually recommend to match the appearance of where you go, which is like if you'd go to a franchise dealership and you would just dress up in t-shirt, jeans, and uh, they wouldn't they want to take you seriously. They always like, Oh, it's just probably to buy a car here, you know, just shopping around. Even though if I would shop around, I wouldn't, I wouldn't dress like that for, for car to buy a car. But anyways, you want to, uh, to, you know, dress basically to match the appearance of the certain business industry you're going in. And again, with this smaller dealerships, you, you will see that they just more, they just t-shirt and jeans. So, uh, I would just wear a you know nice shirt, but don't put a suit. You know, <laughs> like you know what I mean. So that's that's okay. That's my belief about that. Yeah. Okay. That that look uh, and and the the reason why I said that is because um you know when I when I first started I noticed um how how I was getting treated differently a little bit uh, when it came to just sitting down and my appearance. Uh, so so I I realized that I had to work on how I present myself to the fellow business owner. And I definitely do agree with you that you have to match because sometimes a lot of people think that when you're sitting with a business owner, 
uh, they're not people, they're bosses, right? Which is true, but at the end of the day, they're still people. So you have to still talk to them like a person instead of a boss. And that's one of the problems that I, I had with myself at first, when I first began, is when I sat down with a business owner and, you know, we're talking about, about how I can help your business. I was coming from an employee type stature and that made me then look at me like, you're not the guy to do my business. Because when they looked at me, they wanted somebody that is already, already is confident uh, and know what you're doing uh, versus somebody that's going to be a yes man. So I had to change my appearance and fit that role of I, I do run a business. Um, you know, of course, uh, I do agree that you don't have to be in suit and tie. But I, I, I think personally that, the, that, that you should at least, the worst you should get is business casual. I don't think you should get casual casual. Like right. in jeans and T-shirts. But if you wear a polo, then that's fine. But that's me. Everybody has their own way of doing things. And, of course, you've been doing this longer than me. So maybe, hey, maybe yeah. your, your approach is a little bit um, more better for, for people to understand that concept. Now, let me ask you this. I even use the word confident. But what do you think, how, how important is confidence when you're meeting with a business owner? Is the key. Is the key to you to close the meeting and to close the deal. Like if you are not confident, people can sense it. People can feel it, especially business owners. And another thing about uh, the, uh, as, as important as the confidence is honesty. Like I've seen a lot of people, because business owners, they see you like, this is through you. Like if you going out there and you like start talking and they start you asking more questions and they see like you're starting to, you know, going around and you don't really know what you're talking about, they can feel it. They don't want to work with those type of people. So confidence and honesty, this is the most important two keys on the meeting with a business owner. Because if, if you're confident, they'll, they'll see that you know what you're doing, you're confident about your services, and it's your mission to actually sell them, to deliver your product, your service for them, because you know it will help them to improve their business, and and grow their business overall so if if you're confident in your product your service people will feel it and they will they will be likely to you know to to sign up with you if you're confident versus the person that comes in and like oh like they like hey do you want you want this you probably don't want this like people would see in the face expressions like when you sell something you're like you probably don't want to buy from me <laughs> so that's that's where the confidence comes in like if you're confident and you're on a mission to sell your product, people will feel it. They will buy from you because they know this guy is actually believing his worth, believing his product, his service. And I want to work with this guy because I know he's confident and he can help uh, improve my business. Okay. Now, now, and, I, and I'm 1000% on board with that, man, because I feel as though that um, if you're not confident in your product, then what are you selling? Right, because if you don't want to bet bet on yourself, that's what confidence is to me. I feel as though that it's it's when you think you bet on yourself, saying that, "Hey, look, I believe in myself enough to get this done." Now, uh, I have this I have this saying that even you might not be one hundred percent sure of what you're doing, but you need to be one hundred percent sure of yourself being able to do what you're doing. Right, so. For example, uh, and maybe you could you could maybe uh, shine some light on this. Let's say somebody has never done Facebook marketing, and they're trying to get a client, right? They should be confident in their ability to be able to get a client and be able to service that client good work uh, before they um, before they 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 have like a PhD in, in Facebook. Of course, they need to know a little bit about what they're doing, but I feel as though that you need to be confident in yourself. Right. And when you say honesty, um, you know, can you can you go a little deeper into that? Like when yeah. you say honesty, uh, when it comes to, you know, even pitching your business to somebody, um, what are some of the things that are easy are like turnoffs for business owners when they see that somebody saying this thing and it's not honest or it's not open? Yeah. Um, like that. Yeah. That's I, I want to actually to dive deeper in, into that, because I see a lot of people uh, who are starting out. Uh, agency right and start going and selling products um they 
like they think that they need to have you know a whole bunch of case studies and and think and and they think that the business owner wants to work with someone who is who has you know a bunch of uh, success stories and case studies yes this is true but when you're starting out obviously you might not have all that but it doesn't mean that 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 business that that person the business owner doesn't wouldn't uh, hire you instead of agency that has success stories and stuff like that. And let me give you and uh, like my personal example. So when I closed my first dealership, um, so before, before closing the dealership, so it took me eight uh, times to follow up with them. So first time I came in, uh, I talk, uh, I talked to a manager and then he's like, the owner is there, just wait uh, and you'll get a chance to talk with him. So I walked in and I didn't have any experience working with, with the dealerships at the time. I, I had some uh, restaurants uh, and other clients, but that was my first dealership, how I landed. That's actually uh, interesting. So I, I walked in to, to, uh, to his office and he's like, oh, okay, so what do you got? I'm like, hey, uh, so uh, we're a local agency. I help here uh, to, you know, to grow your agency, you know, 15 to 20% with Facebook ads and he's like, okay, that's cool. Um, and he's like, okay, right now I'm busy. So come, come back next week. We can talk about, it. and he's like, you know what he said? He's like, I just got off the phone with a marketing firm because we actually, you, you came in at the perfect time because we actually moving. We want to get more digitally, right? They did TV ads and stuff like that. He's like, that's, I was on the phone. So, but it sounds interesting. Thanks for stopping by Come in next week. I'm like, okay. So next week I'm coming back and uh, he was there, but I didn't get a chance to talk to him. So his manager said, Hey, come back next week. So I came back third week, came back and uh, I finally get a chance again to speak to the owner. He's like, okay, so can you tell me more about, uh, I want to learn more about your services and product and how much it costs. Right. And I'm like, Hey, you know, we need more time. I need more time to actually dive deeper what do you want to uh, do with your business? Where you want to take it? And just, I want to ask some questions to you. He's like, no, man, I don't have time for that, right? I just, how much it costs me, right? So I said, it depends. It depends on what, what do you want to do with your business? And, like, and you just did something that a lot of people always mess up on. When people ask for price, you should never give them price, right? Yeah. Because when you, once you give them price, they feel like you're, they don't yeah. need to know yeah. whatever comes next. Okay. Yeah. So what happened is, so I tell him how much it costs. He's like, okay, cool. Uh, so he's like, come, come back next month. <laughs> uh, I, I thought it's done, it's done, right? I thought it's done deal. So I fine, but I like next month, I like, you know what? I'll just follow up. See, you know, I had nothing to lose. So I came back in and he's like, okay, sit down. So I said, um, he's like, okay, you know what? Uh, by the way, from that last meeting, he said, uh, let me think about it. So after I said prices, he's like, let me think about it. Let me talk to my partner, all these objections. But like, okay, cool. He said, come back next month. So, so anyway, so come back next month. I'm sitting, he's like, you know what? Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't, I didn't have, I don't have actual partners, right? It's just me. So I didn't talk to one. He's like, in the meanwhile, I was talking to other agencies, as I mentioned, kind of, you know, getting more. Uh, information about pricings and like comparing everyone so i just wanted to see and he's like and you know what i decide I'm like what he's like you know what i'll go with you and he's like i'm gonna be honest with you and he said you know why I'm like why he's like i had this agency that I, I was it was he was like in my head i was debating that agency that they have over he said 100 clients he's that in you Right, the guy that just walked in out of nowhere, and he said, "And the re the only one reason I decided to go with you," he said, "because I saw the hunger that you were keep coming. I saw the persistence in you, and I knew that I can trust, I can trust my business to someone like that who will take care, who will actually, who will be actually caring about my business and help me grow, versus." The company that has you know hundreds of accounts like he said i would rather go with you because i saw you confident you honest 
that you know that I'm going to be your first. I told him that you're going to be my first client in this industry, which is still automotive. But I, I told him I have experience with working with other industries. He said, I saw you're honest. And I saw the main thing he said that convinced me, persistence. Like you were keep coming every, you know, every week when I, he said, that's, that's what the type of people, like the person I want to work with. And we, it's been two years. This client is still with us. That's amazing, man. That's amazing. He's, you know, I mean, and, and that's the thing, you know, it's, man, look, we have similar, similar, similar stuff, man. I, I mean, like even me, when I first, when I first got my first social media client, that's exactly what happened. Uh, you know, I went there the first time, they didn't, they didn't want to hear from me. The second time they didn't, the third time they didn't, the fourth time, the guy was like, okay, come back next week, we'll set something up. And then when he set it up, he, so, he told me, he was like, the only reason why you're even sitting here right now is because you got through the gatekeeper. He was like, most people will not get through the gatekeeper. So if you can get through the gatekeeper, you're somebody worth listening to. So after they listened to me, they were like, all right, well, you know, we've been doing a couple of marketing ourselves, but we'll, we'll give you a shot. We'll give you a shot. And they gave me a shot. And it's so funny because after they gave me the shot, uh, we did a, free week, uh, a two-week trial. After, after the trial, and I went back and we sat down, they were like, look, we don't even know what you did. We, we sold. I can't say if it's from you, if it's from somebody else. And I didn't even know, know whether I give them results or not because they were like the first. And they were like, but, you know, we'll, we'll sign up and see. And now, literally, we talk every day, um, very close with the owner. We're still working every single day. And I'm actually – I feel like I'm more part of the business now. And with all my clients, that's how I am. Like, they call me and they say, what do you think? And that's the level of transparency that I feel as though that as a business owner, you want to have with somebody else. And also, this, this will lead me to my next question, which would be partnerships. How do you feel as though when you're working with a business owner, there should be some type of synergy, right? You should see yourself being able to work with this person. What do you think about that? So I see, and this is my approach, and I recommend to anyone and all my students, that just like you mentioned, you uh, as you start working more with that uh, uh, with with that owner, and he start calling you asking questions like and uh, kind of want to hear your advice. This is what I call you want to you want to be not uh, spe especially with this type of business. You want to be the uh, work as an entrepreneur inside their business and be like as you mentioned as a partner of and help them as a consultant. And when they have, you know, need some um, advice, how, how they can take it to the next level, you are there for them. And you're more kind of like a, a partner of, for, for, uh, of that business. And that's how you grow long-term lasting business relationships, which is leading you to more clients and referrals from that client. That's actually what happened to me after we got, uh, uh, amazing results for that client he referred five of his clients because he was in a uh, he was in the group of people they had this like automotive um every year like summit and he there was over 25 dealers nationwide from united wow. states so he's like you know what i love what you do for us we sold i remember over 60 vehicles within three months for him he's like i love what you do and, and plus i was you know, again, being a partner and helping him. And was, again, as you said, you really care about business, about his business. And again, people feel it. People see it. They want to work with someone who actually caring and responsible for their business as, as the same as, as a, a business partner, but you're just an agency, right? Or So, at, yeah, it resulted that uh, he referred us five clients out of that group. Wow. So. Yes, this is the importance of, you know, being uh, uh, and helping your clients and being as a kind of treating them as your partner, business partner. Okay, awesome stuff, man. Well, Alex, you know, we've been we've been talking for a while, man. So we're kind of just going to jump into um, a little bit of shorter, faster questions before we end this, uh, uh, this talk here. So uh, first of all, if somebody wanted to find you, where can they find you? So they can find me, uh, you can add me on Facebook or Instagram at Alex 
and my pretty complicated name, Litvinchuk, <laughs> which is nobody can pronounce. Um, you can find me there. You can find me on YouTube, but mainly Facebook. That's the best way to reach out to me. So it's Alex um, Litvinchuk. You can uh, DM me and I'm pretty responsive there. Um, and also my website, which is alexlitvinchuk.com. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Second, uh, what are what are what what are the names of the technologies that you are you are leveraging right now? That, that it could be in everything, as long as it could be YouTube, you know, Facebook, and for your business as well. So okay. that you know. So uh, I leverage Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, ClickFunnels. If it's you talking about softwares, um, Infusionsoft. And these are the main top platforms that we, that we use in our help scout this for support. Um, yeah. Okay. And, uh, last question, what is one advice that you could give? Uh, even though it's, it doesn't seem like a long time that you could give the Alex that was sweating bullets going door to door. What is that? If you if you had a, a uh, you know some type of magical magical uh, computer that you could send yourself an email, what would it be? What would you have in that email for the Alex two and a half years ago? To uh, what would you have sent that Alex for him to know? So I would say the piece of advice I can give to all of myself, right, or to anyone who is listening watching this, is keep going it's right like you are right there and the success right behind this wall just keep going it's just one just one action one call away one um one decision away seriously you just never give up just just go for it and trust me you right there it's right around the corner the thing that you desire and you're going for that's what i would say amazing man amazing well alex thank you so much thank you so much for taking the time to even come on the middleman mastery uh show to give us input to give us feed on you know how you got to where you are what what it was like before you got there um and again guys you can find alex on youtube on instagram and he says the best place to reach him is facebook which is going to be in the show notes and the comments as well um and alex thank you so much for your time man Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, it's been and, an honor, uh, honor. Thank you so much for having me, man. Yeah, no problem, man. No problem. All right, guys. Uh, again, thank you guys for tuning in today uh, and just listening to uh, the Middleman Mastery Podcast uh, show. All right, guys. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Take care.